Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production. Today I'm going to be going over M Drum Strip again. Somebody asked me recently if M Drum Strip could do parallel buses and uh, master channels and things like that, and it definitely can. In the previous video, to be honest, I just forgot. I think I got done with mixing all those drums and I was like, ah, that's enough. So today I'm going to be going over the parallel channel and how to use the master device in M Drum Strip. So here's what we have. Unfortunately, I had erased everything before all my work so I just it went and redid it and so this is what the remix sounds like now I'll let you see what I did here with the bass drum this going these are my settings for the snare drum I have these settings and for the overheads I have these settings so if you really want to know what I did you can pause it and copy these so what we're going to do is we're going to add a parallel bus first. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, we can add that anywhere here. I'm trying to think of the easiest place to do it. Do this here and let's call this uh, para bus. There we go. I have this set up in Reaper so they look my buses look a little bit different than the other tracks. And all I have to do is just move it over here. Now all we need to do is route whatever tracks we want uh, into here. Uh, let's say I want a little bit of the drums, or the bass drum I should say. And a little bit of the snare drum. Actually, I want a lot of the snare drum. I just want a little bit of our bass drum. So we can solo this and let's move over an instance of M drum strip right in here. First thing we need to do is just make sure it's not on overheads. So let's put this on, let's say, parallel. But turn the saturator, reverb, and all these compressors off. We'll turn the output down and we're just going to play it and use the auto input. There we go. So seems like everything's okay there. You know, the input level's right. I just did that because I don't know how loud the input's going to be. I'm going to play this back again. And what I'm going to do is actually reduce the amount of kick drum in here. I just want a little bit of the kick drum in there. Now, what I'm going to do for this, I'm not really going to touch the reverb, although you could, but let's work with a compressor first. So let's turn this on and let's move between here, glue, pumping, brutal, and squash. Now I had it over here a little bit more towards the brutal side because I really want to hear the tail and this is really kind of elongating it. So I want to kind of bring out the room sound or any kind of tail in my drum, especially my snare drum here. So around here is good. Now the only other thing I'll do here is I'm going to add a saturator after it. So just double click this and we'll turn this up. Now, as you can hear, I'm kind of going like pretty wild on this. And you might be wondering like, isn't that too much compression here? And like, you're doing lots of saturation. But remember, this parallel bus is going to be blended in. So I'll just do this. Everything should be, hopefully, yeah, I didn't bypass it. Turn this to solo. And what we're going to do is we're just going to play it and we're just going to move this up. I'm probably going to exaggerate this a little bit just so you can hear it. Uh, for this type of song, I probably wouldn't want to use this so much. Maybe not at all. But just for demonstration purposes, we're going to move this up so you can hear it. So you can really hear what that's doing there. I might actually probably use a little bit less than that, but hopefully you get the idea. And the last thing, let me show you the last one here, and that's the master. So you put this on your master drum track, which has you know all your drums going into it. Uh, here I'm putting on my complete master. I probably wouldn't do that normally, but I didn't group all these together under one bus here, so it's easier to do it this way. Make sure it's not on drum bus, but on master down here. And you see we have all these different things here. Let's turn them off. At first, 
And what we're gonna do is just use the auto input again. Okay, now let's decide what to do first. We could use this multi-band glue. In this case, I think I don't really need it. Let's try the normal glue. So this has a bunch of different compressors. So if you have uh, M Turbo Comp, you know this like MSL, Meve, 1176, all these. Let's try a few of these and see what the differences are. I'm gonna turn the depth all the way up just so it's easier to hear. I like this DB meld personally. Uh, probably take this and turn the depth down. Pretty punchy there. Now after that, let's put an EQ in here. It's kind of set up already, but I wanna do this manually. So let's go through here and adjust these so we can hear what it's doing. Have it cutting off with the high pass filter at 30 hertz, which I think is good. And let's mess with the frequencies. Did kind of a smiley face EQ there. Uh, you may not want to do that. I just wanted to turn up the highs a little bit and that sounded a little bit better to me, but maybe you think like that's not good. But as you see here, you have lots of bands here. You can kind of, you know, move down, move up and uh, adjust them to however you like. And last, let's put some reverb on here. Uh, reverb last, I think is good. So there, I just changed it. I thought the hall was a bit too much for this. So I just put it in a big room. And then after I had the big room, I just turned uh, the low pass down on the reverb, which I think sounds better. You might also want to mess with the uh, pre-delay, but I don't know the exact timing of the song, so I can't really time it to the song. And uh, I didn't want to spend a lot of time messing with it. So I think it sounds good how it is. Now let's do the before and after on this. So this, I wanted to give it a little bit more punch, a little bit more, I guess, width and depth using the reverb here and change the EQ just a little bit. So I think this can be used to add some kind of finishing touches on it. Uh, let's play it before and after.
you can see by doing all this, we've made everything sound bigger and better, at least in my opinion. Uh, I kind of mix this a little bit too uh, punchy, in my opinion, for this type of song. I'd probably go a little bit more gentle, to be honest. But I wanted to do this so you could actually hear what the effects are, are doing. And so I, you know, compressed it a little bit with a little bit more distortion than I normally would. But I hope you get the idea. Of course, when you're using it, you can do it to taste. So this uh, hopefully shows what the master and parallel devices can do. And also, if you're doing the parallel and you think like, you know what, I want a, a reverb or uh, actually it has a reverb. If I want like an EQ or something else on it, don't be afraid to use the master or room or overhead or something else on the parallel bus. Just because it's labeled parallel doesn't mean you need to use it that way. You can put whatever you want on there and maybe find something that works even better than this for your needs. So if you have any questions, leave those down below. Uh, if you haven't already, give me a thumbs up and check out all the other plugins at meltaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.